This is 5-Minute Power Platform, and today we're going to do a travel approval bot. Now this builds on top of this SharePoint site I built in a previous video. And what it does is you click new and it uses built-in SharePoint capability to, uh, to put in a uh, trip request so that you can get it approved by a manager. And it also pulls in some data like the allowed values for um, hotels and meals and incidentals from GSA's website using a custom connector. In the previous video I showed how to deploy all of that and build it. Uh, let's see here, we'll go to the Space Needle again. And this, this is kind of a neat feature of SharePoint. It uses Bing to pull in like the address from a location when you just type the name. And so then what happens behind the scenes with this then is you put in your travel. That flow is going to run. It's going to pull in the allowed values for hotel and meals. It's going to look up your approver. And then it sends an, uh, an approval request to your approver. And so what I want to do is I wanted to build a bot that you could log in and then it would submit this for you. Now, one of the things we need to do first to this site in order to get the bot to work is I use that cool location field where I typed in Space Needle and it pulled up uh, the address and all that from Bing. You can not easily access that from Power Virtual Agent. So we're going to add a second column just for straight up zip code. And then we're going to add a calculated field in SharePoint. And that's going to take whichever one of these is populated. And so let's build that real quick here on top of this. We'll go into list settings and we'll add both of those two new columns. And so we'll go here, create a column, we'll call this one uh, zip code, and this will be PVA, and this will be a single line of text. And then we'll create another one that's going to be a calculated column, and this one will be zip code calculated. And so the formula for this one is going to be if is blank, the postal code that comes from the location field, then we'll use the one that we created. Otherwise, we're going to use that one. A location postal code and that's it and so we'll hit okay here and so that's done so we have got those two fields there and we should see the calculations are already running off of uh, the uh, location field here and so now we need to make one other change because we want all of our flow to run off of our calculated zip code field let's go into this flow that I built in the previous video and we'll update here to take from the location field we'll instead take off of the uh, calculated field and so this one and that way our other flow, the one that we built in the previous video, will continue working. And so now we're going to build a flow that will then take a user and authenticate them. And it's one that we can use over and over again. And so we're going to make it so that other flows can call this, so that we can use this as kind of a standard component for PVA. When we have someone authenticated, we'll be able to uh, pass in the authentication token and get their name. So we're going to start here from a solution. And we'll create a new flow. And we'll call this identify user by auth token. And we're going to make this a flow button for mobile because we want it to be able to be called from other flows. And the one parameter it's going to take is the authentication token. And then everything else we're going to do here, I, just, I discussed in more detail in the previous, in the previous video, the video on Power Virtual Agents authentication. So we're going to go through this just pretty quickly here. So we'll put in the graph API URL, the headers is content type, application, JSON. And then uh, the last step here is the uh, authentication is going to be raw and it's going to be a bearer token. And we'll put in the auth token that gets fed in from above. So then from here now we need to parse the JSON that's returned. So that's going to come in from the body above. And then we need the schema. I've already got that. I to discuss it more in the other one, but I'm just going to paste it in here. Uh, then we'll get uh, we'll go to Office 365 users, and we'll get information about the user and their manager. And so we'll get a user profile, and that requires the user principal name, which came from the auth token through our parse JSON. And so we'll do user principal name. And then we're also going to get the manager's info. Get manager. And we'll do the same. We'll pop in the user principal name from parse JSON. So now let's return those. We'll return from uh, Power Apps or Flow. And let's just add in the name, email address for both the user and for the manager. So it's username. And that way, these are kind of things that uh, I thought might be useful 
for uh, use across multiple uses in uh, Power Virtual Agents. And so we've got the email address. user profile and then the user principal name as well user UPN user principal name from the user then we'll get the same three things from the manager manager name given manager email And then finally, the manager UPN, user principal name. And so now we've got this that we can use over and over again. Now you may know from using a flow that the first time you run a flow, it wants to uh, establish all the connections as you. You can't do that when you call a flow from another flow. And so we're going to set this one to always use the established connection. And so it's not going to ask the user. It's always going to run as, as my account. So now it's time to create our bot. So coming here to virtual agents. Now this is a bot that I've already established authentication on. If you need to know how to set up authentication, I've got another video on that that, that walks through it uh, based upon a technique that uh, uh, fellow MVP Tomas set up in his blog. And so we're just gonna really go right into this knowing that authentication is already set up. And so we'll do a new topic, which is gonna be submit travel. And then we have some trigger phrases. I have a travel request. I need to travel. It's hard to imagine traveling right now. I'd like to request travel. And then let's go to the authoring canvas. This is the, so after the trigger phrase, this is the message the bot will say. It's just gonna say, I can submit your travel request for you. Please first log in. And then we'll come in here and we'll do the action. We'll do authenticate. And then we come down to this flow. We've got is logged in and auth token. If is logged in, we say, uh, let's start asking them questions now. And so we could say, welcome. What is the purpose? And we don't want a message, we want a question. Question. What is the purpose of your trip? And we're just going to take the entire response, user's entire response. We'll call this the trip purpose. And then we'll ask them uh, the uh, start date. When do you leave? And there's an entity for dates too. Leave. And so we'll take the date and time entity and we'll call this the start date. And then we'll ask another question. When do you return? Ask do a date again. And we'll call this the return date. And then finally, we'll ask a question, uh, what is the zip code of your destination? And then we've also got one, uh, an entity for zip code here, which makes it really easy. And we'll just call this one the destination zip. And then let's just do a confirmation here. So we'll ask one more question. Please confirm these details before I submit your travel. You, leave, you are traveling to zip code. We'll pop that in here. From start date to return date for the purpose of trip purpose. Should I, should I submit this? And then multiple choice options say yes, please submit it. Or no, I need to make changes. Now, if they need, need to make changes, then what we're going to do is we're just going to route the changes all the way up to the top, just for simplicity, maybe not the best experience, but then we'll, uh, we'll route them back into basically the whole sequence again. Now, at this point, then we're going to call an action. 
and we're going to create a new action. So actually, let's create an action. We'll come in here to our solution. We'll create a new flow. And this flow is going to be from Power Virtual Agents. We'll call it Submit Travel. And we're going to ask uh, just a few questions. One is the auth token, because we need that. And then we're going to ask uh, for all the answers that we just gathered here. So trip purpose, start date. We're going to do these as text types because we don't have a date type. End date and zip code. So next we're going to call the child flow, so we'll call flow. This is the one that's going to then take that authentication token, identify the user, their manager, and so on. And so we're going to do this uh, identify authenticated user as one parameter, which is the authentication token. And that's going to give us then the user principal name, the email, and the name for both the user and the user's manager. And so now we're ready to start adding stuff to SharePoint. So let's create a new item in SharePoint. So the first thing is the title, and that's going to come in here from Power Virtual Agents, the trip purpose. The requester is going to come from this child flow here. We have the user's user principal name. We'll let the approver be populated by our other flow. In case we want to change it, we can change it in one place then. The start date is here. The end date also coming in from Power Virtual Agents. That was one of the questions we asked. These will be populated by the other flow, but the zip code needs to come in from the bot. And so we have the zip code. Now, once we're done here, then we're going to respond back to Power Virtual Agents so we can personalize the message back. And let's just uh, return two values. Let's do the uh, user's name and the manager's name. Do manager name. And then we'll map these to the values that came back from, uh, uh, from our child flow. And so this is the user's name. And this is the manager's name. So now let's, let's go back to our bot and add this to our bot. And so we'll call an action. Submit travel. We'll map in here the authentication token, the trip purpose, the start date, the return date, and the zip code. We're going to get back the name here so we can personalize a message back. And so we could say uh, name, username, your request has been submitted for approval by, and we'll put in manager name. And then we'll just end the conversation here with the survey. All right, so let's test this out. I need to travel. All right, so there's our response. We need to log in, so let's go through the login process. Open up the second window, copy the code, paste it back in here. What is the purpose of your trip? To test out Power Platform. When do you leave? We'll say next Monday. When do you return? We'll say uh, May 15th, 2020. It's nice you can give the dates in different format. It'll figure it out from there. And the zip code, we'll say we're going to Seattle, 98188. So it says, please confirm the details. It's interpreted the dates from what I put in there, the zip code for the purpose. Yep, let's submit it. Once it's done, I get this confirmation with my name and my manager's name. And then if I come back here to the site, refresh it, We see here we've got this new one submitted here in approval. And then after the other flow here, as we refresh in a second, we should also have the per diems and the approver's name populated. And there we go. I see it's populated the other values that from the secondary flow that ran when a new item is created. So I hope this was useful to you. What I wanted to do is combine uh, some of the reason we did the authentication and Power Virtual Agents in the one video, as well as the travel approval SharePoint site and some of the connections to external sites. Combine both of those and have a bot do some of the work for us. So I hope this was useful to you. Thanks for watching.